Hello, I'm Robert from Nuvero Flight Systems, and today I'm going to show you how to field assemble your new Sinistar 360. Assembling the Sinistar 360 is relatively easy. You just have to do it in an organized fashion. Take your time so you don't uh, cause any damage to the components. Uh, it's not a race, but I am going to set a stopwatch just to see approximately how long it takes to assemble one of these. The 360 ships out in a Pelican 1620 case, complete and ready to fly. All it takes is a few minutes to assemble it out of the field. The first step is to lay the parts out on the table. I'm going to lay them out in the order they'll be going back on the machine. Now that we have the parts out of the box, we're going to start the build process. The tools required are a 10 mil socket, a 2 mil and a 2.5 mil driver. The camera mount has been uh, folded up a bit to fit in the case, so the first thing I would do is just to uh, give it a little pull down. There we go. Now the camera mount has full range of motion. We're just gonna be really careful for the loose wires at this point, because once the machine's built, everything's sturdy, but at this point, it's a little delicate. Grab all your legs. Make sure your screws are, uh, are backed off enough that uh, there's a lot of room for the boom in there. It makes it much easier. If you're using a power driver, be careful to use your eyes and your ears to make sure you're not over tightening these screws. Uh, typically, you'll tighten them until there's just a very thin gap. First, I'll just uh, re-plug in the uh, remote antenna for the receiver. Yep. Double check. Your legs are straight. They're tight enough. They're not moving. Pretty easy. This is the completed camera mount. Uh, I'm just going to put it aside and we'll move on to the uh, frame structure. This is the main chassis of the, the Sinistar 8 and uh, all the electronics are already housed in here. It's wired up and color coded. Uh, at this point we just flipped upside down on the counter. We need to be careful of the uh, few electrical connections in here. One of them is the diversity box of the receiver system it allows us to plug in the other antennas. These antennas are on the booms as well as the lighting system. The booms are all numbered. We'll lay them out uh, one to eight. You see on the very bottom, we've numbered and marked where each boom goes. Okay, so I'm just going to start with uh, number one. Remember, when you start assembly, the navigation unit is attached to boom number one. So slide this on before you begin. The only trick here is to take your time, pull the wires through nice and clean, and make sure you don't pinch anything in the process. So I'll hold the wires together to make it a little bit easier to feed them through here. Now the boom goes flush with the inside of this bracket. And the marks painted on the boom line up like so. At this point, you can't tighten any of the screws on the frame or you won't be able to proceed with the rest of the booms. Take your wires and pull them up and just tuck them out of the way if you can. Maybe give them all a little twist together. And that way they'll stay out of our way for the rest. Okay, all the booms are in, in the proper order, okay, and we're going to get them as close as we can to the marks for now and start tightening it up, okay. If it's not exact, it's not the end of the world, it's easy to adjust one boom at a time. Next we want to pull the motor wires through the frame 
and have them line up where they're gonna plug into the speed controllers, okay? That will clean up all the wire mess. Boom number one. We'll flip it around and just take a quick look. And if you look at the speed controllers, they're labeled one to eight. And these wires are number one, okay? So you wanna keep in mind that it'd be nice to have the wires come under the main board here. So I'll pull them through one at a time. Now that all the wires are out of the way, the motor wires, we'll move on to the receiver wires. There are two antennas, and they're color-coded in this case, red, white, and black, because they need to be plugged into the right ports. And we'll just tuck that inside, which leaves us with the three LED wires. Same as usual, we're gonna start with boom number one, connecting these motor wires, okay? So, obviously, boom number one has the GPS on it. And we'll just tuck the extra wire back into the frame that we don't need. Another connection is the navigation board to the flight controller, with the red mark up. and with the red markup. We're gonna attach the 360 mount to the bottom of the octocopter. So all the wires are out of the way, they're clean. All we need to do is place the camera mount on top of the vibration dampers. Let's put them in loose for now so that we can get them all in. Now all the screws are in place. Let's just go ahead and tighten it by hand. The last step is to attach the propellers. Every propeller is numbered for a specific boom. Propeller, washer, lock nut. These are aluminum prop hubs with a steel nut, so if you over tighten them, you'll strip out the prop hub. Of course you want them on there nice and firm. I like to grab the motor and make sure you cannot budge the propeller. Okay, That's solid. Now that the copter's built, we need to look over our work to make sure everything's good before we put it in the air. We're going to check to make sure all the lights are on and specifically that each propeller is turning in the right direction. I just do a little motor start so we can scan each propeller. They're spinning really fast so if you turn them off, you can tell Number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight are all spinning in the right direction. We need to make sure it's balanced. Pick it up by the opposing booms. We can tell this one is generally level. It's a little bit tail heavy. Check it this way. And it's definitely heavy on the left. So we'll just uh, loosen the batteries. Perfect. Oh, 26 minutes, and you got a completed movie copter 360. Not bad. Yeah, let's put it up, see if it flies. <laughs> 